When the twin spacecraft, Voyagers 1 and 2, were launched in 1977, they carried a very important message. The golden records aboard the Voyagers contained a summary of life on Earth, a time capsule intended to be found by something, anything, anywhere in space. It's been more than 45 years since they were launched, and they have gone farther than any other spacecraft in human history. However, just when we thought their story was over, lost to space forever, the Voyagers made contact with something, the nature of which scientists are yet to explain. Have the probes made contact with extraterrestrials? Should you be alarmed? Join us in our video today as we make sense of it all. The legendary Voyagers, alien forms, and what comes next. 1970s was a weird and exciting period for space exploration in NASA. It was filled with ups and downs, wonderment and uncertainty. It was a time when we were just beginning to explore and understand what lay far beyond our own clouds. We ached to understand more about what was going on in our solar system. So NASA made plans to create a spacecraft, or twin spacecraft in this case, that would go farther than any other on an uncharted course to the outer solar system. While the mere thought of it was daunting, the team went straight to work on development, still high off the success of Voyager's predecessors, Pioneers 10 and 11. The plan conceived for the Voyager's Herculean feat was in the form of a planetary grand tour that would send two probes to every outer planet in our solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. At that time, we knew very little about these planets, as before the Voyagers, there had only been two trips to Jupiter and just one to Saturn. The Voyager probes were to investigate and uncover the unknowns in our outer solar system, rewriting the books and changing space exploration in the process. These unknowns included the four planets' compositions, moons, magnetic fields, and probable ring systems. But with the cost reaching almost a billion dollars, who was going to pay for all that? The initial mission plans were slowed down significantly. However, at the same time that the Voyager mission was being planned, breakthroughs were occurring in other areas of science like the field of gravity-assisted orbital trajectories. This involved using a nearby planet's gravitational field as a slingshot to catapult a spacecraft to incredibly distant planets, allowing for increased speed while conserving energy. And the only requirement to make this work was to follow the right orbit. Almost like it was written in the stars, it was around this same time that a young intern at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory found a way to cut down the mission's travel time by more than 20 years. By studying the positions of the outer planets, Gary Flandro discovered a way to visit all four planets at once, and in record time. He figured out that at some point in the early 80s, all four outer planets would be aligned in such a way as to take advantage of this gravity slingshot mechanism we described earlier. It was a once in 175 year opportunity, and NASA grabbed it. With the many advancements we've made in science and technology since the launch of the Voyagers, it's easy to underestimate just how much work went into the development of these revolutionary probes in their mission. The team had to overcome several obstacles and ultimately redefine spacecraft design that would influence future missions for years to come. By 1977, the Voyagers were good to go. Each probe weighed 722 kilograms or 1,702 pounds and had several scientific tools, radio systems, and a nuclear power source, the radioactive decay of plutonium. There were about 11 instruments active on each probe. For studying the chemistry of the atmosphere, measuring magnetic fields and charged particles, analyzing radio signals to figure out the physical characteristics of the planets, looking for solar wind by measuring plasma, and two cameras for capturing stellar images. The probes also carried the Golden Records, another ingenious craft by NASA. Curated by Carl Sagan, the gold records hold a collection of sounds and sights meant to represent the essence and beauty of our world here on Earth. They are a message designed to identify our exact location and the manner of our civilization to any alien beings who might encounter them in interstellar space, but more on that later. For now, let's take a look at what the final mission plan looked like. The Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft would launch a few weeks apart. Voyager 1 would scan and take pictures as it flew quite near Jupiter and its many moons. Voyager 2 would likewise pass by Jupiter, but at a slightly closer altitude. Both probes would then be propelled towards Saturn by Jupiter's gravity. If all went according to plan, Voyager 1 would explore Saturn, especially its rings in the moon, Titan. Voyager 1's journey would then carry it beyond all other planets, beyond the heliopause, and ultimately beyond our solar system. 
Voyager 2 would visit Saturn and its moons before being flung by Saturn's gravity to fly by Uranus and Neptune. If it still worked after all that, it would then join its twin at the nether regions beyond our solar system. What a long shot! Everything had to be right, but it was a risk worth taking. And it worked! Voyager 2 was launched on August 20th, 1977, and Voyager 1 just a little more than two weeks later, on September 5th. Despite having a lifetime cost of over $750 million, by 1989, the Voyager spacecraft had returned enough never-before-seen scientific data to fill 6,000 volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Do you think it was worth it? The knowledge we gained from the Voyager missions concerning Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, as well as their many moons, was extensive in both amount and influence. It affected popular ideas of the solar system, influenced science textbooks in our schools, and established the framework for our current space program and the string of missions that followed it. Voyager is largely responsible for the knowledge we have of the outer planets, not to mention the countless pictures taken from viewpoints never experienced before. The stunning photos taken by Voyagers 1 and 2 fueled our imaginations, enthusiasm, and our hopes for the future of space exploration. Voyager provided additional information on a number of topics, including Jupiter's weather, the ring systems around Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, volcanic activity on Jupiter's moon, Io, the masses and densities of Saturn's moons, the atmospheric pressure on Titan, Saturn's largest moon, Uranus's magnetic field, and the great dark spot on Neptune. Despite all these incredible successes, by the time Voyager 2 reached Neptune in 1989, 12 years had passed since the launch, and many people, even scientists who had worked on the mission, had abandoned the entire project and moved on. But Voyagers 1 and 2 no longer required their mission team to continue their epic, pioneering journey through space. They had everything they needed for that moment, as well as for any future encounters. When NASA figured that the twin probes would eventually go beyond our solar system, they thought it would be a good idea to convey some sort of message to any intelligent aliens who might someday locate them. While the Golden Records were a great idea, no one, at least not us, expected that something would actually get them, not after 45 years, but the Allen Telescope Array in California has detected some strange signals coming from Voyager 1. Using 20 of its 42 dish antennas, the Allen Telescope Array, or ATA, made contact with the Voyager 1 spacecraft last year. The ATA is a recently renovated radio observatory near San Francisco, California, dedicated to the search for alien life. According to a statement, the telescope collected data from the probe for 15 minutes, which was then stored on a disk. The statement gave no further details on the signal it picked up. Could it be that NASA has communicated with aliens and doesn't want us to know about it? Very suspicious. What is especially worrisome is that the Golden Records have a map that can help intelligent life forms pinpoint our planet. Voyager 1 has been sending back erroneous information about its location in space due to some weird glitch that was first reported last May. While Voyager 1 is still being watched by NASA's Deep Space Network, it still begs the question of if this glitch is due to the Voyager's age, the loss of power, the slow breakdown of its equipment, or something else. Since it entered interstellar space in 2012, Voyager 1 has been measuring properties of the interstellar medium beyond the end of the heliosphere. That's a large bubble formed by the sun's solar wind, as it gets impeded by the interstellar medium. Right now, Voyager 1 is around 23.8 billion kilometers, or 14.8 billion miles, from Earth. It is headed for the Oort Cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding the sun, and the furthest region in our solar system. No spacecraft has ever made it to the Oort Cloud, and it will take Voyager 1 another 300 years to get there. Unfortunately, Voyager 1 will have died long before then. As scientists estimate its plutonium power source will have been completely used up as early as 2025. But perhaps the contents of Voyager 1 will live on in the possession of an alien space explorer, as curious as us to find life on other planets. Do you think that some intelligent life form has already found our golden record and NASA is hiding it? Let us know what you think in the comments.